Hi, I'm Joanne Banco, author and online educator at Let's Go Sew. This series of It's So Easy TV is all about helping you to sharpen your sewing skills and polish up some of those techniques that maybe you've, you know, put, up, put on the wayside and need a little bit more help with. So, sergers and sewing machines are common in the sewing room. And today what I'd like to do is do some common techniques, some basic, you know, tried and true things that we use in our sewing construction and, and show you how they work on the sewing machine and show you how they work on the serger. So then you can decide, depending on what equipment you have, what is gonna work for you. And we'll go over some of the positives um, on both ends, okay? So we're going to start uh, at the sewing machine here. I'm going to start with something very basic, something very simple we do all the time, and that is finish off raw edges on seam allowances. So I've just got a simple piece of cotton here, and I've already attached a uh, overcasting foot to this machine. So I'm going to select an overcasting stitch. There are a lot of them available on the machine. And when I select this one right here, it's going to automatically tell me I should be using um, the foot with the letter G on it, and that's what I've already got on the machine. The advantage of this foot, I'm going to go ahead and, and start stitching and tell you about it while I'm stitching, is that it is designed very much like the serger. You'll see when we go over and do the serger, the foot itself has a pin on it, and that pin is designed for you to guide the raw edge so that when it forms the stitch, it literally literally jumps over the raw edge and clean finishes that. So whenever you see the word clean finish, if it tells you in a pattern to clean finish, that's what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to clean up or finish off that raw edge of fabric. So take a look at that and you'll see that's a nice clean finish. It's um, you know covered on the raw edge and that's going to keep my my fabric from raveling. So let's pop over to the serger. We're going to do a lot of to serge it, to sew it today. And we'll slide over here and we'll do the same thing with the same fabric. Now I've got my serger set up for four threads. Uh, you could go ahead and set it up for three threads, which would mean you would take one needle out. If you take out the, the right needle, let me just smooth that out a little bit. If you take out the right needle, it will form a narrower stitch. If you take out the left needle, it will, I mean, if you take out the, the left needle, it'll form a narrower stitch. If you take out the right needle, it'll form a wider stitch. So there we've got another clean finish. The difference with the serger is not only does it wrap over the raw edge, it wraps over it with two interlocked loops. So we have loopers on a serger. On a sewing machine, we just have a bobbin and needle thread. And that literally seals the raw edge. So for exceptionally ravelly fabrics, the serger really is going to give you a very smooth, very neat, clean, clean finish. And cut that thread. Now let's take um, a stretchy piece of fabric and let's see how this can actually um, overcast and sew the seam at the same time. So I've got two layers of knit fabric. And again, I could change this to a three thread. But the serger has always been known to be ideal for knits. And you're gonna see in a minute here why. For one thing, again, it completely clean finished. Now, I don't have a raw edge on here that's gonna ravel, so that's not an issue. But I have two things generally that happen with knits. Sometimes they wave out of shape a little bit. And most sergers have a feature called differential feed where you could change the dial and it will ease that in for you a little bit. This was a small piece, so I didn't have an issue with that. But what it does is it also creates, let me snip this so you can see it a little bit better. It creates an extremely stretchy seam. And it's very, very elastic and very um, has excellent, excellent recovery. And then when we open that up, you can see that that's completely locked at the seam line and it's a nice, neat, narrow seam. Now the other thing that the serger did for me is it trimmed as I stitched. So I've got multiple operations all in one smooth pass of the serger. Let's switch over back to the sewing machine and we'll do the same, same fabric, okay? We've got that same stretchy fabric. I'm gonna use this same presser foot and we'll use the same stitch we did before because that one works for this. It's gonna create a slightly narrower seam and I'm gonna just increase the stitch length a little bit. And you can see that it's, again, it's, you know, it's clean finishing that edge. It is just rippling that a little bit. So 
don't have differential feed on a sewing machine to counteract that, I would need to ease that in a little bit with um, pins or with my fingers as I stitch it. Okay, I want to cut that one. And I want you to see, though, very similar, very similar finish. I've got a stitch along the seam line that's sewing the seam, and I've got an overcast, over um, stitching over that, that raw edge. Again, nice and, nice and stretchy. And when I open it up, I've got a nice, clean look to my seam. So both of these work pretty similarly, except the serger obviously is doing extras for you by cutting as you sew and gives you a few more different options with the differential feed. Okay, so we've got overcasting and we've got seam finishing. Let's move on to um, doing something that would be um, like a, a blind hem stitch, okay? And I'm gonna do it just with the regular presser foot today, but we would have a blind hem foot for this machine. But you can do it with the, with the regular foot as well. And I'm gonna start out by doing it on this uh, wool piece of fabric. I would normally clean finish this raw edge, but I'm gonna skip that step. So I've folded up my hem, and then to do a blind hem, you fold the hem back on itself so that the outside of the garment touches the outside of the hem allowance. You leave about a quarter of an inch extension. Okay, and we're gonna now select a blind hem stitch. Put my cheater glasses on for this one so I can see nice and close. And you always wanna do a test sample with this. So I'm gonna start out at the beginning. I may not be right where I want it. But what I wanna do with this is I want the traveling stitch that forms on the right hand side to form on that little extension that I left. And then I want the bite stitch that actually grabs the hem to just nip the fabric on the left. So that's pretty good. And again, there is a blind hem foot that you can use that has a guide on it. So either one will work. All right, let's take this one out and show you what this one looks like. So there you can see my traveling stitch, my bite stitch. When I open that up, I've got just a little nip showing where that uh, blind hem is formed. Now, the advantage on a sewing machine is a couple things. First of all, we've got a blind hem that's a standard blind hem and we've got a stretch blind hem. We also have the ability to adjust the length. So it can be more spacing in between all the spaces that it, that it bites, that stitch. If I were to switch to a more spongy fabric like this, you would barely see those stitches. And the fact that I can change the length um, means that I could make them even, even less uh, you know, showing up. And of course, using the right color thread and, and matching your fabric, I'm using contrast today so you can see it, that would all blend in and it would literally disappear on this fabric. So now let's switch over to the serger. And we've actually got a blind hem foot. So I'm gonna raise up my presser foot. I'm gonna take this out of the way and I am going to remove this foot. I'm gonna show you a, a really neat trick for removing your presser foot on a serger. Slide it sideways and then take it back out and when you put the new one in, put that in the same way. Raise that presser foot up just a little bit and it'll snap on a whole lot easier for you. Okay, so I wanna get the, that extra little tail out of there. Now, what I would want to do with this, I don't want all four threads with that. So I'm not going to bother to take out the needle, but for the rest of what I'm going to do here, I don't need um, a four thread stitch, a three thread will work. So I'm just going to snip that uh, right needle thread so that you're not seeing it. All right. So we're going to do a similar thing with folding, folding the hem up, folding it back against itself. And this guide on here is gonna help me see where I should guide that fabric in. So let's do, again, a little test. I might need to change and adjust where that's biting. This guide helps me so that the edge of this guide along the fold will keep me consistent. All right. And I could lengthen the stitch a little bit, but I want you to see these stitches, so I'm gonna leave it like this. All right. now. One of the advantages here is that it is literally overcasting that seam at the same time that it's doing the blind hem. I would have to do that in two steps on the sewing machine, okay? But you're gonna see when I open this up that those stitches are very 
very, very close together. Again, if I used a matching color, and actually if I loosened my tension a little bit, that would lay just a little bit flatter. But I'm gonna see a lot more stitching. If it was um, something where it's a, a sportswear and it doesn't matter, it, you know, then I don't, I don't worry about it. I've got two things done, accomplished in, in one step. Okay, so that's blind hem on a sewing machine, blind hem on a serger. Now, the next one is one of my favorites, and that is gathering, okay? We're gonna do um, gathering with the regular foot, so I'm gonna snap this one off. Let me switch my feet here. And we, we um, you know, cut the fabric when I did um, that last step because that actually trims off the excess seam allowance if you have um, a little bit of extra hem allowance rather, or if you just got raw edges. So we run it along that blade, but we're really not intending to trim very much. In this next step, we could trim if we want to. What I want to do now is gather, okay? So in order to gather, I've got settings on a serger. I've got the ability to set differential feed for a very high number, lengthen the stitch, and tighten up my needle tension. And that's going to give me really, really, really tight gathers. The tighter I go on the tension, the tighter that gathers. And then by leaving my finger just behind and kind of pushing that fabric back in, I'm going to get even more gathers out of that fabric. So one long strip gathered up very, very tightly, very, very quickly. Again, the raw edge is all enclosed. The beauty of this is that it's still a little bit adjustable. Let me just teach you another little trick on that though. If you are needing to let those gathers out, make sure you leave yourself a long tail because as you ease those gathers off, you're gonna lose a little bit of that thread, okay? So let's do gathering on the sewing machine. If we're gonna do gathering on the sewing machine, we're gonna need to go to a standard straight stitch. So let me go back to the utility stitch here. And we're gonna select a long stitch. I've got a special basting stitch on here, so I'm gonna select that. It automatically loosens the tension for me. And it makes a really, 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 really long stitch. Speed that up, okay. Okay, so we're, what we're doing is we're creating a basting stitch. And in order to gather that up, I'm gonna have to pull on that thread. There are some other ways to do it. There is a gathering foot, there's a ruffler, but all of those create controlled gathers that you don't have the ability to adjust. With this, now what I would do is pull that thread and literally gather that fabric up to whatever the amount that I need. Okay, so once again, take a look. I would have to clean finish that raw edge. So the serger does a really, really, really good job on that. Let's do just um, kind of a recap. We've got the ability to do uh, blind hem. We've got the ability to do gathering. We've got the ability to do some other techniques as well. So take a look at your options, explore what they are, test it out on your serger, test it on, on your sewing machine, and keep those as samples to use in the future. Visit the website, we'll have more tips and tricks for you.